I had a woman that came to me uh, to get a, a, a document signed that, so that she could get her uh, gastric bypass surgery. <laughs> this lady, this lady just walked into my office off her insurance plan. Can you imagine walking into my office looking for that? <laughs> I don't know which of us was more upset. <laughs> it's like, you came to me for what? No. I said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let them cut out your precious organs that have been designed for you to work properly. I'm not going to do it. And you can go right down the street, and there's five psychologists on this street that will be glad to take your money and do this, but I'm not going to do it. Mm, I got her intrigued. What do you mean? I said, um, you just have a dietary content problem. You have a behavior management problem. You, you don't have a... Uh, this is not a problem with your body. There's nothing wrong with your body. Yes, it is. I've tried every diet. Really? You've tried every diet? Ever heard of John McDougall? No. Ever heard of Dean Ornish? No. Ever heard of Colin Campbell? No. Ever heard of Dr. Elsenstein? No. Well, then you haven't heard of this diet. <laughs> so I spent the next year with this lady who liked me for some reason. I have no idea why because I was like really honoring. <laughs> and I'd say, look, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. It was one of these things where we get excited where somebody has so much to gain and you want them to, to, uh, to do well. And so I was like pushing in a cheerleader and I said, pushing a little too hard. She just wasn't going to do anything. But she sat right there, not going to, she at least didn't do her, her surgery. And this went on for about eight months. And so I tried everything I could think of to maneuver her to get her motivated. And, uh, and this is a lady that, you know, I don't think knowingly ever ate a vegetable. I mean, this was just... It was McDonald's and ice cream, and I mean, that's just what it was. And uh, ham and eggs for breakfast. And I said, look, okay, one day I said, look, I'll, look, this is all I want you to do. I just want you to make one change. Don't make any other changes, just one. I want you to just eat oatmeal in the morning. And I don't care if you put syrup all over it. I don't care if you put Count Chocula in there. I just want you to eat some oatmeal. She said, okay. She started eating oatmeal. She went down to 260 pounds. She lost 78 pounds. She didn't do anything else. <laughs> it didn't matter how hard I tried. It didn't matter how slick I was, or, you know, little jokes or encouragement. Or, it didn't matter what. There was no way to get her to move. She said, I got to tell you, Dr. Lyle, that I feel good. I feel good, you know, I, uh, when I used to go with my uh, daughter to her, to her things at school, I was like a spectacle, and I was embarrassed, and my daughter was embarrassed, but now I just kind of look like everybody else, and I'm fine with that. I thought, well, fair enough, okay, we, we did what we needed to do. We swapped one thing, and that's the effect that we got, and I knew that if we'd swapped something else, we'd get more, but I just had to leave it alone, okay? Now, so you need to be thinking, if you have a weight problem now, what are you going to swap? So you can see it's a very simple system, and it seems to tie in with everything we've learned about um, the Minnesota Starvation Study, which is one of my videos, about how when you've been calorie restricting, you uh, tend to start to eat a lot more food, and the resolution of that is to increase the quality of your food. Uh, we're also now hearing here that if you increase the quality of your food, you um, allow your receptors to accurately measure how much you're eating, so you get satiated earlier. And this this is a this starts to bring your hormones back into whack because weight gain is essentially a hormonal problem, in that the hormones get destroyed by the the refined diet, and we end up um, having no idea when we're full, binge eating under eating, starving ourselves, cravings, and it's just a complete mess. It's a complete mess. So I like this system because I still don't think weight loss should be the focus at all, but I wanted to share this story that he told there because it's about swapping for foods that are less calorie dense and uh, much more satiating. And um, play around with it. I'm still not trying to do a diet and I'm not trying to lose weight, but I do find myself more and more naturally bulking out my meals with a ton of vegetables. I just had uh, a casserole that I made, a lentil casserole, and I started off with like, you know, two cups of lentils and some tomatoes. 
And now what I do, I put two cups, of, uh, three cups of lentils in there with water, and I fill the rest of the pot with vegetables because it tastes better, feels better, more nutrients, fills me up more, less calorifically dense, and I feel completely, sati completely, completely satiated. So I'm steering myself away from calorifically dense foods because they're not useful. Now, fruits are the ideal calorific density because they're our natural food. And like, like they're, they're about 500 calories a pound, you know, 1,000 calories, uh, probably about, yeah, 1,000 calories for bananas for, for two kilos, so yeah, about 400 calories a pound. That's where we want to be, that, that's the ballpark figure we want to be in. So all you've got to really do is look at your diet, even if you're not vegan, you know, um, that's your call. But all the other junk, you know, work out what you can swap to increase the volume and reduce the calorific density. That's basically, so if you are eating steaks and you're lardy with steaks with potatoes, it's not a good mix. Starches and that amount of protein, not a good mix. So replace all of your potatoes with cauliflower and that will help with that whole process. The alternative you can do is you can keep the cauliflower, you can keep the cauliflower and get rid of the steak and bring back the potatoes, which is what I would do. If you have steak and potatoes, you've got a choice. You've either got to get rid of the steak or you've got to get rid of the potatoes. Personally, I would advise highly that you get rid of the steak because then you've got a much more calorific density, dense meal, which is gonna satiate you. And potatoes with tomato sauce, like fresh homemade tomato sauce, or even just you know potatoes with corn or you know some kind of vegan dish, it's going to satiate you, make you feel full, and over time, because you're eat, eat, increasing the quality of your food, you're going to lose weight. It depends really how badly you want it. That's the bottom line. Yes, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I've already done, and I'm loving it. I don't miss all that food. Oh, the heavy, dense, bingy food. Not in your life will I go back to eating that. Not a chance whatsoever.